uh, building the best peer workforce, authentic interviews for individuals with limited work histories. Please join me in welcoming Curtis Dan Messier, the founding director of the h, &H Academy at the New York City Health and Hospitals. Hello, everybody, and good afternoon. And give yourselves a round of applause for sticking around. And uh, I really appreciate you um, being here. So uh, first, I just want to talk really quickly about peer workers, and then I'll talk a little bit about authentic interviews for this population. So uh, peer workers are uh, individuals who use their lived experience with mental health or substance use challenges to support other individuals on their path to recovery. Um, it's a really amazing um, in-demand middle skill occupation, and it gives the people who do this work such meaning um, in their life. And um, it's a really powerful way to help other people say, I've walked in your shoes. Um, let me show you the way to recovery. Um, and, you know, what I also love about this workforce is it takes something that's traditionally a barrier, uh, you know, having a mental health or substance use challenge, I myself have a substance use challenge, it takes one of those barriers and flips it on its head, now that's a prerequisite for employment, so it's a really powerful um, and important workforce, and um, it's been growing. The peer workforce has really been growing steadily in New York City. Um, it's a, uh, we expect this trend to continue. There, as we heard from many, many people on the stage before, there is just not enough behavioral health workers out there right now. I think Henry Garrido said there was a 38% vacancy rate for social workers. So there's really just not enough of this workforce and behavioral health out there in this post-COVID world is so important. So peer workforce really has been growing and has been a way to fill um, those gaps. And it's growing into new areas. It started in mental health and substance use, and that's still the backbone but now there are uh, family peers, youth peers, and there's uh, justice peers, which um, I helped to start. And we have a new uh, New York City Justice Peer Initiative with a great executive director, uh, Helen Skip Skipper, um, for individuals who have a lived experience with criminal legal system involvement. And they can help other people uh, who are ensnared in the system get out. And the same thing with housing pairs. If you have a lived experience with homelessness, you can help other people maneuver out of that situation, saying, I've been there and done that. I talked with someone this morning who works with um, domestic violence survivors. I mean, that would be a great peer workforce. Say, I've lived through this. I've gotten out on the other side. Let me help show you the way to move through this. So this workforce is really growing. Um, and, you know, mostly just because it makes sense, right? If you have this issue, who better to talk to than someone who has a shared lived experience? Um, but very often this uh, workforce, uh, this population doesn't have strong work histories, whether they've been incarcerated, whether they're on disability, whether they've dropped out because of mental health or substance use challenges, um, they don't have uh, uh, strong work histories. So a traditional way to select this population uh, can be difficult. You know, the resume might not show it. Um, so how, um, do we recruit and select an individual? So, so we've done this for many workforce programs, it especially works well with the peer workforce, but it's, it's transferable, is we do authentic interviews. And the first thing to do is I like to draw and doodle a little bit, and I like to draw what's the ideal candidate. So you can look up here, an ideal peer has big ears, it's a great listener, they have a big heart, they're really empathetic, they've got these super committed legs that keep them walking to work every day, they're great on the electronic health record, um, and they really are, are willing to fly that flag of recovery and talk about that. So the first thing you do with an authentic interview is you really make sure that you're clear on what are the skills um, you need. And then you, know, you design a process to figure out what point in your process will you be assessing um, for these skills. It can be anywhere from the application to these authentic interviews. Uh, online classes, all the way through. And then you have it kind of planned out of when you want to assess um, for these different um, qualities. And so at the Peer Academy, um, we have a very rigorous um, 
process for uh, selecting our students. So first, um, we pair individuals off to answer some scripted questions. Where are you in your recovery? Uh, what does medication do for you in your recovery? What has been your experience with social workers? And we don't ask the questions. We have each candidates and small groups ask each other. Because one thing that traditional interviews don't do is to watch how someone listens. And a peer worker, the probably most important skill is that you're great at listening. But how do you get to that in a traditional interview? They're just talking. Um, so in this one, we actually watch more how an individual is listening to their partner than and what they're saying about it. So that's a really great way to assess that and it really comes to what is the exact characteristic we're looking for. Um, the second and probably the most important part of our authentic interview uh, is the role play. I mean, what better way to see if someone's good at a job than they do the job? So we actually have scenarios, real life scenarios um, from our peer counselors working throughout the hospital, write up some scenarios for us. And during the interview process, we have um, everyone gets one chance playing the patient or the participant and one chance playing the peer counselor. And we just watch. And some people really shine in that. And it's amazing to see how strong they are in this role. And you can picture them and they can picture themselves in this and they're just got it. Um, and then they switch and they can and play both ways. And it's really amazing way to assess someone. Not like, what would you do or tell me about it? You just get to watch them. And we have clipboards and we're assessing. And it's been amazing to really see who can step up in that moment um, to, to show that they have the skills. Um, and then the last piece that we do is we just do a group project. You know, again, when we think about traditional interviews, you know, how do you assess group work, right? That is one of the most important skills that anyone can have in a, 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 a behavioral health team in health and hospitals or anywhere throughout the workforce. But in a traditional one-on-one -on -one interview, they can say, oh, I'm great, I'm collaborative. Like they're just saying that. But here we really watch people and we'll do like a little art project. We'll see those who kind of slink off and really don't want to do any work or we'll see those who try to take over. And we're like, whoa, red flag, right? Um, which you would have no idea of that if this were a traditional interview. So these interviews um, are great for really any job, um, but really the power for this is that they are um, work really well for special populations. So the individuals that we work with, and I'm sure that many of you work with, might be justice impacted. Right, They might have a mental health or substance use challenge. These are individuals who are so often overlooked for our jobs because they don't have it on a piece of paper. But when you have an authentic interview, an authentic process, it's not what's on that piece of paper. You let an individual in those 90 minutes really shine and really show you what they have. And we were able to select just some amazing human beings who are now working for us in our hospital and able to help all those others. And they were overlooked for so much of their lives, but they really stepped up in that authentic interview. They were seen and we saw something in them and now they're uh, working for us in the hospital and, and helping other people. So authentic interviews are wonderful. Peer counselors are wonderful. And uh, if you know anyone who wants to be a peer counselor, uh, you can. Um, scan that QR code and send some applicants our way. But 